This is an extract from the Nature Podcast. For the full show, head to nature.com forward slash nature forward slash podcast. Woody Allen once said, I don't want to achieve immortality through my work. I want to achieve it through not dying. It's a bold ambition, but what if you could do both? What if achieving immortality was your work? This week, I've been talking to scientists who study ageing. It's a fact of life that our physical bodies wear out. From cells to organs to organ systems, nothing lasts forever. Scientists may not be looking for the fountain of youth, but they do want to extend our lifespans beyond the current physical limits. Many people claim to have found the key to ageing, whether you can solve ageing of the entire organism with just one molecule or one pathway. It's probably not the case. This is Renier Bonne, who studies the role of long, non-coding RNAs in the ageing of the cardiovascular system. But that's just one area of research. People are studying all sorts of possible ageing culprits. There's levels of DNA methylation in cells, the length of telomeres that protect the ends of chromosomes, restriction of calorie intake, metabolic rate. Whether there is one answer or many, as research continues, even more possible factors appear. So one of the things that pops up a lot is microRNAs. Uh, microRNAs are um, very tiny RNAs, as the name already says. Um, they are about 20 nucleotides long, made by, by cells. And they are regulators of gene expression profiles, which means that these single tiny RNAs can control the behavior of the cell by controlling which proteins are present at a given time. MicroRNAs feature heavily in a new paper on ageing out this week. I called up one of the authors, Dong Sheng Kai, who explained that the research started off looking not at RNA, but at the brain. They started by considering the 300 neurons that make up the nervous system of the worm, C. elegans. Uh, experimentally, if you change a few neurons of those worms, it could be sufficient to change the lifespan. In some cases, can extend lifespan. A mammal brain is a lot more complex than a worm's. Dongsheng's team decided to focus on a particular area called the hypothalamus. Because hypothalamus has a classical function to regulate the whole body physiology, whole body homeostasis. So there was a natural logic for us to reason that the hypothalamus might be involved in an agent which has not been studied before. Previous work had established that the hypothalamus is indeed somehow involved in ageing, though no one knew how. Other work had been looking at the effect of stem cells on the ageing of various organs. So Dong Sheng and his colleagues were very interested by the discovery a few years ago of stem cells in the hypothalamus. So I think uh, now put, the, put these two threads together, right? Hypothalamus and stem cells. So we, then we were uh, asking these questions. Does this group of cells work to somehow affect uh, or contribute to the functions of hypothalamus in regulation of aging. Dong Sheng and colleagues first looked at the hypothalamuses of mice over their lives and found that aging was associated with a big loss of these hypothalamic stem cells. The next step was an experimental intervention. So to test if there's a cause-effect relationship between the loss of stem cells and the aging phenotype, we develop experiments to destroy this group of cells in mice. We found the loss of these cells lead to the acceleration of aging speed. So there was a causal link, but what could it be? How was the hypothalamus influencing aging in the rest of the mice's bodies? The answer may be in the microRNAs that we mentioned earlier. We found hypothalamus stem cells have a unique ability, a very strong ability to secrete microRNA. And the microRNA is very small, so it, it, it is produced, and uh, recent uh, research has said that it can be secreted to outside of cells and uh, affecting other cells, the neighboring cells, uh, some distant cells. MicroRNAs can be secreted from cells and travel round the body in vesicles, tiny sacs of membrane. But no one yet knows what the microRNAs produced by the hypothalamus are actually doing. We don't know whether microRNA is secreted to directly affect the rest of the body, or it's possible microRNA is secreted in the, in the brain and affect different parts of the brain, and then brain can affect the whole body. So uh, we, we still have a very limited understanding and a very limited uh, information. Even so, Renier Bonne is intrigued. 
what is uh, super interesting about the new paper is that it actually provides a, a link between the brain and uh, aging of the body. It was known that the um, stem cells in the hypothalamus um, contribute to that, but what exactly then um, gives this signal from the hypothalamus to the entire body was not known. Renier thinks the discovery that microRNAs are involved is bound to interest people looking for a way to prevent ageing. I'm pretty sure that people will dive on this because, of course, this is, if it's something that you can uh, use systemically, you can also think that you can inject these uh, uh, vesicles. Actually, the authors also show that it uh, can be done in mice and that rejuvenates the mice, basically, or prevents aging. Um, so if this can be translated to humans, of course, uh, this would be uh, the elixir of life, basically. But even ignoring our limited understanding of this mechanism so far, Has this paper actually found the elixir of life? The one answer to the question of ageing? That's part of the answer, yeah. So I'm pretty sure that if you only look at that, that you will uh, have only part of the puzzle. What you also see in the paper is that these mice still die of old age. These mice don't survive indefinitely or their lifespan is not doubled or so. So it's only part of the puzzle, but of course it's um, it's an important piece of the puzzle and it's it's scientifically also a very interesting mechanism by which this works. That was Renier Bone from the VU Medical Centre in Amsterdam. And you also heard from Dongsheng Kai from the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, New York. Dongsheng's paper is available now at nature.com forward slash nature. What I got from listening to that was that the secret to eternal life is basically a brain transplant. Well, it makes a change from having to drink the blood of young, beautiful people in order to keep your looks. Is that even a thing? I'm sure that happens in a fairy tale somewhere, doesn't it? Not any fairy tales that I was read as a child. Slightly concerning. I'm going to keep my youthful blood and my beautiful brain cells away from you just to be on the safe side. That is probably sensible.